All right, so let's take a look at uh, how to set uh, not only uh, some kind of language-based text, but also have that text uh, be spoken by the app itself. So it's gonna—it's a text-to-speech feature. And what we're also gonna do is set a particular voice uh, for that speech. So we'll have a different accent for English, uh, for Spanish, and we could even add a different one for Klingon. Now it's not actually Klingon, but you know you could decide, oh I'm gonna make it uh, Russian, right? So it's, it, it sounds maybe more Klingonish to you. So um, and then uh, what we'll also be able to do is um, I'll show you how you can speak uh, the text of any particular label and also just speak anything uh, based on your particular language preference. So there's a lot of cool options in here and they're all relatively simple. Uh, so let's just try this out for a moment. Uh, by the way, when I when I ran the app, uh, the, the last time I ran this, I had my language settings set to Spanish. So it's, it's telling me Ola right here, but if I had chosen Klingon, Klingon, well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and run it real fast. I'm gonna build this again. And uh, you know what we're doing here is we're, we're using saved preferences or saved values, so th they're persistent through the lifespan of the app. As long as the app is not deleted, uh, whatever the user chose last is going to be what's here the next time they launch the kit. Okay, so uh, and you can see that it is giving me the <laughs> Klingon greeting for hello, which I didn't actually think there was one. I thought they had more of a just kind of what do you want as for their greeting, but uh, apparently there is one now. So uh, <laughs> email your complaints if that's not true to cartoonsmart.com. Uh, so then let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, what's happening here and uh, we'll pick on this guy first, the text label, because that's the easiest thing to look at. And we are playing around in our choose language.sks file. Just kind of ignore all this for right now. Um, and that would make it harder to ignore. Here we go. So this is our text label and uh, it's called different language label. If you want to create a label, all you have to do is drag one out from your object library. So let's just kind of pretend we're starting from scratch here and you just got to give it a name. Okay, that's it. My label. Uh, of course, you can set the fonts and um, you can put in here dummy text, whatever you want it to be. And really, uh, even though I put in high for this for right now, this is dummy text. It's going to get replaced by uh, what we do in the uh, property of the list. So uh, for right now, just keep your eye on this. Different language label is the name of it. I know it's kind of a lengthy name. And what we're going to do is we're going to go find the choose language page in the property list. Of course, that's going to be named identical to the .sks file. And boom, here we go. Under labels, we've got different language label and text from language. If I unfold this, you can see I've got three different settings right here. English, Spanish, and Klingon. So let's pretend my little hypothetical app supports these three languages because I've decided it does. English, Spanish, and Klingon. That's what I want. So you can see that um, that is how the text um, knew to find these values to display. But how did it know that my preferred language was Klingon? Okay. What I've got is a, a, a dictionary in here called set values if nil. So the first time the app ever runs, someone's just downloaded it, uh, this is going to be true. The values in here are not going to be existent, the val or I should say the value for the uh, reserved uh, variable language is non-existent and we're going to set it to Klingon. Now after someone has been using the app, if they have set their language preference, this would not run again, okay, because they've set it, it's no longer nil, and that's the only reason it sets it, because it, it was non-existent, okay. Uh, so that's how, you know, down the road, people are able to put in there, oh, my, my lang language is English, and it's going to stay at English. It's never going to go back to Klingon unless they set it to be that way. And um, I should note that just uh, as we discussed in other videos, the set values of nil or, or setting values is um, you can put in here any value you want to set and it can have different meanings for whatever you're doing in your app. But this is going to be the one of the few times where I'm going to actually reserve <laughs> um, language means something this saved variable name means something for other properties in the kit. Okay, so it's a pretty generic one language. Let's go with it. Okay, so uh, that is how that works. Let's unfold or fold those back up and then let's take a look at the elements in the scene that are actually setting uh, values or, or set it or saving those uh, language settings. And uh, let's go back over here to the um, so the, to the demo real quick, you can hopefully hear English. when I click down on this or tap down on it. Hispanic. 
and okay uh, what you might not notice though is the voice is actually changing the dialect uh, accent is actually changing based on each one of these so maybe it's a little bit more clear with Spanish. okay it's Spanish English, English right uh, and uh, so that's going to be one of the things that we're going to set up and it's a really neat feature um, with that you do have as many languages as you do localizations uh, with the app itself or with iOS. So uh, back over here in our uh, scene file, let's take a look at the buttons that are uh, making this uh, particular magic happen. Uh, it's not the labels. Your labels are never going to be buttons unless we, unless there's something that extends <laughs> the uh, the class a little bit. But what we've got is uh, we've got uh, invisible buttons behind the labels, and that's just as good. So you can see this one is named English button. This one is named back here Spanish button and Klingon. And uh, if you ever want to make an invisible button, well, it's uh, pretty easy. All you have to do is grab out a color sprite. You have to give it a custom class of element, which is going to extend it. So it has properties like touch events, touch up events, things like that. And then you've got to give it a name. So you can call it my button, whatever you want. Uh, if you want to give it a texture, go for it. That's fine. In this case, they're just going to be invisible. So all I did was, uh, I, I think I set it to black and put the opacity down to zero uh, percent. So it truly is invisible. Okay, so that is what's uh, making it so that we have something to tap, an area to tap into. And let's take a look at what happens when we do a touch event with our English button. All right, so first thing, we're going to set values, and this is going to be language. You can put in here multiple values if you want, which is why that's plural. But um, in this case, we're just using one you know, key and value over here. So again, uh, just like we did with our set values if nil, we've got our language. There's language. Okay, so it's going to replace what we had in here previously with English. Then our speech voice is going to be United States. And you could also put in here the uh, this little code which I've output to the uh, output window and I'll show you how to do that uh, if you need a little reminder but here it is so I, I could have gone with EN dash uh, capital US but it's probably a little easier to just remember the country maybe you're wondering why we didn't put the language name well look we have English 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 there's a lot of uh, a lot of English is in here but uh, slightly different accents so you've got uh, so that's where we're just going with the um, the country value and and again here's a little note says use the country value in parentheses don't put the actual parentheses in if you're gonna do that uh, but either one would work if you're used to those country codes somehow and uh, and then you probably didn't notice this but I'm outputting to the uh, output window uh, just a little message that says changing language to to English uh, if you're kind of tinkering with the kit and you just want to kind of see if a button's working you can always just put in here output and then any text that you want to see if it is actually doing anything and you can see down here in the output window it's give, you know giving me a little feedback over there and then uh, speak preference uh, this is something that I I didn't have to do uh, to change the language but um, what is going on here is it's actually speaking the preference or saved value uh, for whatever language equals at that time and in terms of the kit I in some properties I, re, I say preference but it's really just one of these saved values okay and it all kind of roots back to these being NS user defaults, which are really kind of just preferences for your app. So, um, so when I put in here speak preference, all it's doing is it's going, oh, we got an, all right, that's English, right? This is just a go between between, you know, it's a variable. This equals English. But of course, if we were to click down on our Spanish button, we've got uh, set values is going to be Spanish. Let me move up. Put this in the same order that it was below before. So language is then going to be Spanish, and you can see the speech voice is then going to be Mexico. And then again, it just does speak preference for language. And uh, keep in mind that um, the the language that I'm setting in here, you know, because I want to make it so that you guys can do things like have Elvish or Klingish, whatever Klingon. You can. Um, these these are just kind of my own arbitrary naming of of languages. Okay, uh, so. It's not the actual true localizations of, uh, you know, what what Apple comes up with for localizing apps. But but the the speaking preferences, uh, those actually or an actually I'll, I'll, the speech voice I should say those actually are those true localizations. So right here that's you know that's Apple stuff. 
me putting in here language Klingon that has nothing to do with Apple okay all right so uh, then let's take a look at some of the other properties uh, we've got our greeting button that was uh, stuffed underneath the speak the label so when I click down on this greeting button all it's gonna do is it's actually gonna read out whatever text is inside of this particular label at that time so uh, kind of think about this you know when I click down on this that's gonna change the label and all this is doing is it's just speaking the label okay so it's it's really it's non-language dependent but because I put in here some text that depended on the language you know then it is essentially kind of speaking that language so it's a really it's a very simple way of, of handling uh, that and you can see that uh, under my greeting button touch event it just says speak label label and different language label all right so whatever was in there at the time it's gonna speak and then I've also got <laughs> a language button and that is underneath our speak something in language so I click right here you can see the language button and uh, what's going on with this is it, it is a little bit more fancy the um, the property in here is it speak language this is a dictionary and what it's gonna do is it's gonna speak whatever text it is equaling our current language preference at the time so if I had Klingon in here it's gonna said say I said something in Klingon you know I said something in Spanish now keep in mind in this particular instance I'm not um, I'm not changing the speech voice, but that's something that would have been handled up with our touch event where we actually set the preferences, you know, so there's speech voice. Oh, and I, I guess I didn't actually point this out, but for my uh, Klingon button, what did I set this to? Oh, it was actually South Africa. I thought it ha I had it in there as Russian. So uh, um, that is, uh, that's pretty much, uh, I think, everything. Let me take a look at the events. Oh, okay. Uh, output voice codes. This is just... Uh, that's all it does you don't need to put in here any sort of value and if you ever need a reminder for what the uh, all those country codes are you can just put in here under events output voice codes yeah, this is fairly harmless if you if you did happen to leave it in your app uh, giving it to Apple but generally you don't want to have print commands uh, inside of you know this going on under behind the scenes in your app although you know that was true with Objective C. I don't know. Maybe with Swift uh, too. They it, this stuff is all completely ignored on the app side. It's not like anybody would ever see it. It's just I guess maybe it could drag down the app. Who knows? So uh, that is it. And uh, think about it, it's really not that many settings. And what we're able to do is uh, change. We're, well, we're able to speak text. Hey, that's something we could never do in the last <laughs> Storytellers Kit. Uh, we're able to uh, pick out different languages. And, um, yeah, I mean, hey, hey, what a morning for me. I got a lot done. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys very soon. And once you know, I actually ended up forgetting something. There are some uh, more properties in the settings uh, dictionary. And these uh, generally, except for, except for these first two, uh, they have to do with the, uh, the speech properties. So you can set the speech rate. And uh, that is going to uh, quicken or uh, slow down the, um, the rate at which the speaker talks. The uh, speech volume, that's an obvious one. One is 100%. And then the, uh, the speech pitch, uh, that changes things quite a bit too. Uh, more manly, the lower it is. And then uh, speech voice, you can set that to your default based on those country codes that we uh, talked about over here. And then allow run on speech is kind of an interesting one because you'll notice, okay, so I'm going to click down on this, right? I said something in English. Did you hear that? All right, now I'm going to click that again and then, here, let's change it to clean up. I'm going to click that again and then I'm going to quickly click one of these other ones. Okay, so. I see Spanish. You notice how it cut it off, right? Uh, but if I have this set to yes, and we'll run again. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, I got to go all the way back to the menu, don't I? All right, click right here. And let's go find that. Okay, so there's our page. And uh, notice now I'm going to click on this. I said something in Spanish. Klingon. Okay, uh, you might not have noticed, but I clicked this and then this. And what it did is it didn't replace the first text with Klingon. It went through speaking all of that and then added that on. So watch this. I'll go and click all three of these. English. There you go. So uh, now, why would you want to do that? Aha! Uh -huh. You could create some sort of uh, 
funny Mad Libsy type uh, app where you know the the reader can click different you know combinations things together, make funny sentences. Uh, you know, have your if it's an educational app, you could have your uh, nouns up here, your verbs. Uh, what else is there? I don't know. I'm a programmer. Okay, I'm out of here for now. I hope that uh, makes sense. <laughs>